Our title for today, our very exciting topic, is called Significant Figures. And the reason that we talk about significant figures is we need to know how to round an answer. We do lots of mathematical calculations in chemistry. And we need to know that when we get an answer, how many numbers do we actually report? Do we report 15 digits because that's what it says on our calculator? Or do we think about this and determine how we round our answer? So basically today, it's all about rules of rounding in chemistry. Keeping in mind, the purpose of reporting quantities using the appropriate number of significant figures is to accurately report meaningful measurements. So I'm not trying to torture you with rules of rounding. What we need to keep in mind is that when we are doing calculations in chemistry, we are looking at numbers that are often measurements. And we can only report an answer that is as accurate as our piece of the measuring equipment is. Actually, our least precise measuring equipment. And so I am not doing this again for torture to accurately report meaningful measurements. That's where this whole idea comes from, significant figures. When reporting a calculated quantity, Significant figures are based on your quantity or measurement with the least number of significant figures. So whichever quantity, measured quantity, has the least number of significant figures, that is your guide for rounding your answer. So how do we determine what figures, what numbers are significant, and what aren't? Non-zero integers are always significant. So for instance, a number like 372. 372, these are all non-zero integers, so that means that this number has three sig figs, three significant figures. What about this number 15.90? How many significant figures in this thing? Well, I have one, two, three non-zero integers, but what about that zero? Is that zero significant? Well, <clears throat> little did you know, there are numerous types of zeros. So let's look at our rules here before we make a decision about how many significant figures this number has. There are three types of zeros. There are leading zeros. Leading zeros are never significant. So for instance, if we look at a number like 0 0.0025, how many sig figs in this number? There are only one, two significant figures. Two sig figs. Because these one, two, three zeros, these are leading 
zeros. They go in front. They're basically placeholders is what they are. And so they are never significant. This isn't a leading zero though. So we still don't know what it is. Captive zeros are always significant. So for instance, 1.008. How many significant figures here? So these zeros are captive between integers. So that means that these zeros are significant. So we say that this number has four sig figs. So 1.008, four significant figures. But still, this is not a captive zero. So we have not addressed that zero yet. Trailing zeros, that's what that is. Trailing zeros aren't unless the number contains a decimal point. So, this is a trailing zero. And it doesn't matter where the decimal is in the number. If the number has a decimal point, we then have to make the assumption that it was measured to that actual decimal place. And so this trailing zero is significant because the number has a decimal in it. So if we go back to this first one, 15.90, it has four sig figs. Okay, so let's see. Let's look at a couple of these. Um, the number 100. Over here. How many sig figs? One. One sig fig. No decimal in this number. The integer is the only one that counts. These zeros don't. It could be an estimation. Whereas 100 point, that tells us that this is not an estimation, that this is an exact number. And so these are trailing zeros, and this number has a decimal point. So we say that this 100 point has three sig figs. Okay, so this is for recognizing how many significant figures are in an actual number. What about in doing calculations? Because that's what we will do most, that's how we're going to use this most of the time. So when you're adding or subtracting, use Use the number with the least number of decimal places to determine the answer. So let's do an example of this. If we have 12.11, 18 1 1.013. Okay, and that is a sum that we are going to find. So we've got three. 2, 1, 11. Okay, so we get this final answer of 31.123. So our question is, how do we round this thing based on significant figures? And so what we're going to say is, because this only goes to the 10th, this 18.0 only goes to the 10th. This, we would assume, is our least precise measurement. 
And so we can only report to our least precise instrument. So we would say that this thing, so we can only report our answer to the nearest tenth. So that means we're going to round the tenth place. This is a two. We're going to round to the tenth place. This is a two. So this thing is going to round to 31.1. That is our answer. Okay, so addition, subtraction, you are going to use your number that has the least number of decimal places. It's a little different from multiplying and dividing, which is what we're going to do most of the time. When multiplying or dividing, use the number with the least amount of sig figs to determine the answer. So, for instance, if we have something like 4.56 times 1.4, okay, and we do the multiplication for this um, on the multiple choice part of the exam, you guys. You don't get to use a calculator, so you, you've got to be able to do this kind of thing rapidly. So I'm just going to do it. So what do we have here? We've got 24, 22, um, 16, 17, 18, and then I've got 6, 5, 4, 4, 8, okay, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So here's my answer. 6.384. So I've multiplied to get it. Forget about this addition that, that I needed to do to get here, okay? I've multiplied to get it. And so which of these two numbers, 4.56 or 1.4, has the least number of significant figures? It's this one. It's 1.4. Okay, and how many significant figures does it have? It's got two sig figs. So that means that I have to round my answer to two sig figs. So that means I'm going to go to the tenths place. So I'm going to round up, and my answer is going to be 6.4. That's it.